I wanted to ask you, um, switching gears a little bit, about the outcome of primary races in Ohio, where J.D. Vance won the Republican Senate primary after getting the backing of Donald Trump, though he had attacked Trump years ago, even though his opponents had aired months of ads highlighting Vance's anti-Trump statements of the past, including saying Trump could become America's Hitler. Vance has since become an avid Trump supporter and praised the former president during his victory rally Tuesday night. Thanks to the president for everything, for endorsing me. And I got to say, a lot of the fake news media out there, and, and, and there are some good ones in the back there, and there's some bad ones, too, let's be honest. But they wanted to write a story that this campaign would be the death of Donald Trump's America First agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, it ain't the death. J.D. Vance is a venture capitalist and author who is heavily supported by right-wing tech billionaire Peter Thiel and will face off against Democratic Congress member Tim Ryan in November's election to fill the seat currently held by Republican Senator Rob Portman. Um, Vance's wife clerked for Justice Kavanaugh. In another closely watched race in Ohio, Democratic Congress member Chantel Brown defeated progressive challenger Nina Turner, the former co-chair of Bernie Sanders' 2020 presidential campaign. Turner teased a 2024 presidential bid in her concession speech last night. Let me say this extemporaneously. All right, All right. All right. All right. Sister Turner ain't going nowhere. Is, 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 is intact. And this is what I do know, that in the spirit of Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, I'm unbought and I'm unbossed. Yeah. And that's why that money came in here. Because they know in the halls of Congress that I was going to shake that sucker. Yeah. On behalf of the poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class. But that's all right, Pastor Early. They can't So this comes as The Intercept reports Nina Turner had faced opposition from several political action committees, including the Democratic Majority for Israel PAC and the Protect Our Future PAC. Nina Turner also did not receive support from several progressive groups that had backed her previous run. One of those groups, the Justice Democrats, said in a statement, Nina's a giant in the progressive movement and we're proud to have gone all in for her campaign last year. The reality is our organization has to be strategic about our priorities as we're getting massively outgunned by Republican donors funneling millions to super PACs like APAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, and DMFI, Democratic Majority for Israel, against our existing candidates, they said. For more, we continue with Andrew Perez, senior editor and reporter at The Lever, who wrote about this race in a piece headlined, Oil Mogul Bankroll's Attempt to Buy Democratic Party, uh, to buy Democratic primary. Uh, Andrew, explain what you found. Yeah, so what we found was um, that the DMFI PAC um, in, in recent months has been just heavily funded um, by an oil heiress, um, uh, Stacey Schusterman, um, who, who runs Samson Energy. Um, and she had donated, I think, two and a half million dollars uh, to uh, DMFI PAC since March. Um, and DMFI PAC spent at least a million dollars on the race this cycle, um, in just really in the last few weeks. And they, they had also spent like almost two million dollars uh, last uh, last election against uh, Nina and, and supporting uh, Ch Chantel Brown, who won. Um, and you know, so they a big part of the the campaign really was just saying that you know Nina Turner was 
not, you know, a real Democrat because she had been critical of, of Joe Biden and critical of, of the party establishment. And, you know, I think what the results really show is that, you know, if especially because it was much closer last time, um, this this time it was not a close election at all. But, you know, if, if you know, progressive groups, you know, don't, you know, back candidates, especially uh, candidates like Nina, who have been, you know, really critical of the establishment, like the party will, uh, the party and its operatives will really, really sell out to, you know, to, to destroy them. And, and you know, we, we really saw what happened this time. Well, and I wanted to ask you about that, because in the in the first race last year, there was only five percentage points difference between them. This time, Nina Turner lost by two to one uh, in the mm -hmm. vote total. Uh, what did, did you was your sense that it was uh, largely a result of divide am among progressives or did she not run as strong a campaign this time around as uh, previously? You know, it, it sounds like, you know, a big, a big, a big issue really was that progressive groups weren't really involved and, in, you know, groups like DMFI really, really spent big in, in the last few weeks. And then, you know, Chantel Brown also had support from a uh, super PAC led by a crypto billionaire, uh, Sam Bankman Freed. Um, and that, that group also spent about uh, around a million dollars. Um, and, you know, two million dollars in a one congressional race in, in a few weeks is just a pretty staggering sum of money, and, I, and it was clearly a lot to overcome. Uh, I, I wanted to uh, ask you about uh, another issue that you've uh, followed uh, a lot. You recently wrote a piece with David Sirota titled The Means Test Con, uh, in which you discuss how the Biden administration is considering forgiving some student loan debt. Uh, but not the $50,000 congressional Democrats have pushed for. Uh, could you talk about that in this whole, the battle over what the Biden policy should be on uh, student loans? Sure. Um, yeah, so the, the student loan issue, you know, Joe Biden did promise to cancel at least $10,000 on the campaign trail of, of, of uh, student debt. But, you know, he'd also kind of pledged to, to cancel, like, kind of all federal student debt. And, you know, right now, we don't really know what the number is going to be. He said it won't be 50000 um, but it, his administration is signaling it will be at least 10000 And, you know, for a lot of borrowers, that's, you know, it's it's definitely good money, but it's not, you know, it's not altogether that helpful if you have larger loans or um, if, if you just have older loans with ballooning interest. Um, and, you know the other the other issue is yeah the the fact that um, they're talking about imposing an income limit um, you know also known as a means test and you know that kind of thing it's 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 funny it, it polls well in theory um, it's it's definitely popular among pundits especially because you know there's this odd argument that uh, student loan cancellation would really benefit the wealthy which is just not really borne out by facts at all um, or borne out by data but um, you know the, the issue there is that it, it creates a paperwork headache for people it's it's gonna you know poor uh, borrowers might just not even have their loans kind of forgiven automatically then um, but you know there's also the universal universality issue right like you know, the, the US has some universal programs and, and they're popular right like Social Security and Medicare are very popular. And, you know, when you start creating, you know, this kind of means tested program, it starts to be viewed less favorably. It starts to be viewed as a, as a welfare program. And then, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's much easier for opponents to attack. And it's, you know, it might, it might also make it more difficult for people to, to, to have their loans uh, canceled. Andrew Perez, I wanted to move on to another piece that you've done on marijuana legalization. You recently wrote about the Manchin family's short-lived cannabis dream. Tell us about it. Um, sure. So, um, you know, Joe Manchin is one of a handful of conservative Democrats uh, who are, you know, standing in the way of uh, federal uh, legalization of, of marijuana. Um, and, you know, it's, it's funny, a bunch of those Democrats, the, the handful that are being talked about right now, represent states that have either legalized uh, weed for either recreational or medical use, just like West Virginia has. West Virginia is legalized for, for medical. And, um, you know, we, we've found records showing that uh, Joe Manchin's son, Joe Manchin IV, 
registered a uh, an LLC called Wonderfully Wild LLC for the purpose of getting into the marijuana business. It, it, it's detailed right in state records. And we, we got to speak with him, and he, he told us that he didn't end up getting into the business um, because it just doesn't make a lot of financial sense right now. But um, we, we also saw that the, that the LLC, he'd, he'd been using it to buy up some tax liens um, locally and uh, was given you know deeds to, to two homes right around the start of the pandemic. Um, but, you know, he, he kind of assured us that he had reached uh, agreements with those people to, you know, allow them to stay in their homes uh, and, and it, it, or that they're working on payment plans to kind of take back their homes, like, as, as we speak. And Andrew Paris, uh, I'd like to ask you in terms of the prospects for the midterm elections, uh, given the events of the last uh, uh, last couple of weeks, uh, the uh, uh, clearly what appears to be a Supreme Court decision uh, uh, that will end uh, Roe v. Wade. And and now, of course, the victory of uh, the Trump-backed J.D. Vance in the Republican uh, primary in Ohio. What do you see from your perspective of uh, the prospects that the Democratic Party faces as it heads into the midterm election? Sure. Um, you know, I guess it's pretty, pretty widely accepted that things are not looking good for Democrats. Um, you know, there's there's been a whole lot of kind of blame shifting going around about how the party's not messaging, you know, properly, or that that the you know certain you know left wing uh, agenda items are 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 you know hurting the party's cause. But you know, there's also the issue that the party really hasn't done a whole lot um, in terms of you know like direct aid to people at all since since the COVID relief bill over a year ago, um, and you know they they spent. The better part of last year, debating an agenda bill that they that they failed to to enact entirely. Um, so you know, I guess what you're hearing today is that uh, is that you know Democratic operatives in Washington think that you know the end of Roe might kind of help them mobilize voters. Um, but you know, it's it's really definitely to be determined, and it's you know it's not it's obviously a, an issue that has you know just giant repercussions for. You know, people, especially uh, you know, uh, poorer people, people of color. So it's 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 definitely a big a big issue, um, and it's not just a political one, right? It's going to have a, a giant effect on people's lives. And finally, Andrew, let's end where we began, uh, which was with the elections in Ohio, but with J.D. Vance, the best-selling author of Hillbilly Elegy, uh, the Trump-supported uh, Republican senatorial candidate winning its significance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's definitely, you know, it's going to be perceived as a win for Trump um, because Donald Trump did endorse his campaign. His son uh, had definitely uh, done a lot of rallies with him, as as did uh, as did the former president. Um, and, you know, I, it's both candidates were pretty conservative. We have 10 um, seconds. I, <laughs> I guess J.D. Vance was probably seen as, you know, more anti-establishment. But, um, you know, it's it's I guess it's probably not terribly different than if uh, Josh Mandel had won. <laughs> well, Andrew Perez, senior editor and reporter at The Lever, will link to your reports at democracynow.org. That does it for our show, Democracy Now!, produced with Renee Fels, Mike Burke, Messiah Rhodes, and Sheikh Maria Tarasena, Tammy Warrenoff, Camille Baker, Trina Nadura, Sam Alkoff, Tamari Astu, Joe John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Honey Masood, Mary Conlon, Juan Carlos Valdiva. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.